Welcome to Loving Out Loud, how to improve communication, sustain sexual passion, and create lasting love relationships. My name is Paula Smith, and I'm your summit host. Loving Out Loud is about loving fiercely and showing up in a different way to create a new reality, one that allows you to access your deepest truths and desires. No matter where you are in the love and life cycle, Loving Out Loud is a prescription for awakening your heart, your mind, and your body to a deeper consciousness and a more authentic and intentional self-expression. Welcome to Loving Out Loud. My guest today is Dr. Aaron Turpo. Dr. Turpo is a licensed professional counselor and the premier African-American counselor in Atlanta. He specializes in relationship coaching, marriage counseling, healing from infidelity, healing from a divorce, and internet dating. He is also the author of the book, The Harmonious Way. This is our recent conversation. So um, welcome, Dr. Aaron Turpo, to uh, the Loving Out Loud Summit. It's such thank a you. pleasure to, to have you here with us, and thank you for taking the time to, to speak to our, our viewing audience. Excited to be here. Yeah. So Dr. Turpo, you have uh, a book called The uh, Harmonious Way? Correct. Yeah, and you talk about mate selection in your book. Very good. Yes, I do. Yes, so I do. can we kind of give our viewers um, a, sort of a window into your work? Sure. Um, the book is called The Harmonious Way, mm -hmm. Finding Love and Marriage by Playing Your True Note. Oh. And the reason I wrote it was, uh, first, a couple of reasons. One reason is uh, some of my personal story. Okay. Uh, when I had a marriage, my first marriage that didn't work, and it's, I start off in the book talking about this, and I was tired of keeping uh, having to have the same experiences over and over again of not being with the right person. Mm -hmm. And so I was saying something's going on here. I need to figure this out. And so I, I launched into this personal journey of trying to figure out what was going on. Why was I keep? Uh, why did I keep making the bad mistakes that I was making as far as mate selection? Mm -hmm. And so I happened upon the concept of compatibility, mm -hmm. and that is what the book is about, about choosing the right partner based on compatibility versus things like uh, romance or emotions or, uh, you know, sexiness or lust or infatuation mm -hmm. and these types of things. And so um, I think it was real important. And then I also noticed that many of my clients were making the same mistakes. Okay. They were choosing people that were not healthy for them, that were not good for them. Okay. And I said, I need to write a book about this. And so I wrote mm -hmm. this book uh, about getting in touch with who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And with that information, going out and finding somebody, uh, play your true note honestly. First, discover who you are. Play your true note. Find somebody else who's playing their true note. And hopefully the two of you can come together, harmonize, and make beautiful music together. Mm -hmm. So that's why I came up with The Harmonious Way. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful image uh, Thank you. to mm -hmm. think about. Now, there'll be some experts out there that might disagree with you and say mm -hmm. that there is no such thing as compatibility. Okay. So, so, so talk, <laughs> so talk <laughs> about, um, so how do people have this conversation uh, and, and how do they figure out who's compatible and, and who's not? Well, it takes time. The first step, as I talk about in my book, is knowing who you are. You have to go on a safari. Mm -hmm. uh, to explore who you are mm -hmm. uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, just all the different aspects of who you are. Right. Once you figure that out, some semblance, we're in the constant journey of trying to figure that out, but when you right. start at least on down that path of figuring out who you are, then you're in a better place to find somebody that you make a good fit with. Right. Um, I'm a big believer in compatibility, but before if she was fine and the sex was good, I was in love, I was ready to be married. Right. I understand, Dr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had to learn the hard way. You know, yeah, people yeah. make, they make very smart, rational decisions about their investments, mm -hmm. their vacations, the homes that they're going to buy. Yeah. 
And when it comes to their love partner, they, they just go right back to the romantic comedy movies and books and fictional and love songs, and they just want to go in la-la and make irrational decisions uh, based on emotions and whims. Mm -hmm. The decision of who you get with to be your lifelong partner is too important to make on emotional whims. If I told you that I wanted to invest in a certain stock just because I thought it was sexy and it was an emotional whim, mm -hmm. most people would say that's not a smart decision. Right. right. So it's the same thing here. What can be more important? So we need to make a smart decision. To me, a smart decision is compatibility. Mm -hmm. Somebody that you feel that you can make a good fit with. Square peg, square hole. Not square peg, round hole. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess I'm, I'm just wondering when people finally uh, meet that person and, um, you know, differences will invariably come up, mm -hmm. right? You know, right. You, you might discover that uh, a value or as you're evolving, a value may change. How, exactly. do, you, how do you talk with your, your couples, your clients about dealing with that? Well, that, to me, when, I, when they talk about that, I say that is exactly right, and that's all the more reason why compatibility is important. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're with somebody for just one or two reasons, and that's what's holding you together, mm. when those one or two reasons fade and slip, mm -hmm. you have nothing left. You have nothing left. Maybe. You have nothing left. But if you're with somebody for a lot of different reasons, mm -hmm. and a lot of different values and interests and things that are holding you together, when one or two things change, which inevitably will, because that's the nature of reality, is that things change, right. you still have a lot of things that can hold you together through the long haul. And so that's why compatibility is important. Now, you're never going to find anybody perfect. You're not going to ever find your clone, mm -hmm. okay, somebody that you just fit jam up with. Mm -hmm. But the more, incom the more this uh, incompatibility occurs, the more this chasm occurs, mm -hmm. then it becomes a little bit harder to, to really naturally be together. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I put it to my clients when I'm talking with them, in the mm -hmm. old days, uh, Jack and Jill kind of grew up in the same environment. Right. <laughs> Not much diversity. Yeah. Everybody had the same mores, values, interests. This is how marriage is. Yes, of course it is. This mm -hmm. is how parenting is. Yes, of course it is. This is mm -hmm. how holidays are spent. Yes, of course it is. Yeah. And so they just kind of kept it moving. Didn't have to t do all this communicating. Mm -hmm. It was just like, just had to just go ahead and live life. And yeah, why would you question? Of course that is. Right. Today, Jack and Jill are highly diverse. You're mm -hmm. highly diverse from your next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so you, you could, Jack and Jill can grow up and, and now be attracted to each other just like in the old days. But now, when Jack and Jill come together, this is how marriage is. No, it's not. Yeah. This is how holidays are spent. No, it's not. Right. This is how parenting is spent. No, it's not. Wow, wow. So now we, all this incompatibility has created this chasm. And so now what do we have to do? Now we have to communicate. Mm -hmm. Now we have to talk. Now we have to accommodate. Now we have to compromise. And it's a stretching and the stretching and the stretching. Mm -hmm. It's still doable and that's what keeps us counselors in business <laughs> <laughs> because we teach people how to close this chasm. Right, right. In the old days they didn't need as much because everybody's pretty much on the same wavelength. But now because of these chasms we help people bridge this chasm to come together through communication and these types of things. People weren't as skilled as empathizing and they didn't have to study and learn from somebody how to empathize and talk and right. this is stuff this is we've evolved this as a skill mm -hmm. uh, it was more natural right. unconscious confidence yeah. before in the past yeah now it has to be conscious confidence conscious competence right so you're known as as a uh, the black uh, coach for black America yes right and so yes. that's that's predominantly your clientele right yes so what are some of the struggles that that your that your your couples your individuals are coming to you with today? Well, some of the, I, the yes, my mission is to help uh, black couples through better communication. Okay. Um, and the way I look at the the problem is that I think because of slavery and Jim Crow segregation and the history of our people in the past. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, psychological residuals that are left over mm -hmm. that have caused us to behave in certain ways that, is, that are really not helpful in, in our relationships with each other. Okay. Um, you have the Willie Lynch type uh, dynamics where the black men have become like displaced warriors. 
feeling not that, that they're not of value, that they don't have much to contribute. Mm -hmm. And this has caused in a lot of ways for them to be highly uh, sensitive to being disrespected. Men in general are sensitive to being disrespected, uh, but I think black men in particular. And uh, some men, black men and men, are just so sensitive to it that it's on a sick pathological level. They're willing to kill for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't diss me. I'm a bust the captain if you did if you step on my shoes or something like that right. so you so you have this type of level of um, sensitivity to being disrespected now on the flip side with the female the female because of this male losing his place in society as a strong leader in the family and coming down 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 being sensitive to that the female has had to rise to the occasion right she has right. had to be the strong black woman that holds the family together mm -hmm. so it was a good thing it helped for the survival Mm -hmm. But in the other, on the flip side, what it has done, it has put her in this position to say, I'm strong, and some, unfortunately, some to the point of, well, I don't need a man, can't a man do anything for me, I can't do for myself, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And that becomes this creation, uh, this dynamic, you know, what, what can you do for me, this type of, uh, type of situation is going on. Um, having a little bit of freezing, but I think you can, we can see each other, okay. Yeah. So, um. This dynamic, is, I see it happening a lot when they come in, and so what I try to do is to get men to recognize the value of family, uh, to communicate better, to because when men feel disrespected, it hits their, fight, their fight or flight response, and when it hits that fight or flight response, they want to they wanna fight, okay, mm -hmm. so some men will lash out physically, they learn that they can't do that, so then men, okay, well, I can't do that, mm -hmm. well, let me fight back verbally, but then they fight, find out that they they, their verbal skills are no match for the female's verbal skills. So they're like, ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't win. Yeah. So let me, let me, if I can't fight, let me fly. Ah. Okay, so then they fly. So now they withdraw. They hang out with other guys, uh, you know, mm -hmm. happy hour, golfing or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, um, or if they don't do that, they'll, they'll shut down. They'll be there in body, mm -hmm. but fly in, in spirit. Mm -hmm. And so they'll just sit there, watch TV in the remote, and the family activities will go off around them or play video games or what have you. Mm -hmm. and so I work with men on valuing family more, how to communicate about feeling disrespected more to, mm -hmm. so that they can get their needs met. Re communication is the key because that helps you to not have to fight or fly mm -hmm. and address your needs and concerns through effective communication. Mm -hmm. That's what I do with the men. For the women, I try to get them to communicate more respectfully and be uh, sensitive to make sure that even if they feel they're not being disrespectful, understand the nature of the male and how he does need to feel like he is a valued person, a valued warrior in your household. Mm -hmm. So these are just some of the dynamics that I work with. And then it's all, that's why I say through better communication, right. to, to help this dynamic going on. Right. Do you find that there's much like digging in, you know, with people, because that's, it seems like a tall order for both men and women. Mm -hmm. to yeah. to do that do you find uh, you know just a lot of resistance to that or people are just sort of excited to know what what the dynamic is and that that this is the reason that the relationships are are in, in so much trouble well I think there's resistance out there for counseling in our community first of all everybody's referred to go to the pastor first mm -hmm. and then the pastor is not uh, that well trained in, in counseling. He has a little bit of counseling courses, but usually not enough to deal with a lot of, a lot of these dynamics. Right. So, um, so he'll do uh, pretty good. But then in our community, unfortunately, you have a lot of media people who say, well, you don't go, you don't need anybody but Jesus. Don't go to counseling. They're really down counseling all the time. And that's, I'm not appreciative of that. Why not do both? Why not go to church, but also get counseling as well? Mm -hmm. So, but once people come in, and then you have the male dynamic of not wanting to be um, have another man tell them what to do. But usually, uh, women seek me out because I am a man, and they feel that a lot of times that helps the men to feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, yeah. uh, many have come to me saying that they were in uh, counseling before with a female, but the male felt like he was being teamed up on. Yeah. And so, uh, a lot of women will seek me out and bring them. Uh, their men in, and then when they do that, the men feels the men tend to feel a little bit more comfortable, and so uh, it's been a good good experience. When they get them, when they get there, they, they're a little resistant. You can tell they sparsely fill out the intake form. I mean, they <laughs> they're not really into the whole process. But then uh, 
we help, I helped them to I feel a little bit more comfortable. And by the end of the first session, they'd say, you know what, this isn't so bad. I'm, I'm going to keep uh, coming back. Yeah. So, so Dr. Turbo, how do you help them to see or make connections between sort of, you know, the legacy of slavery and, you know, the changes that uh, from that time period to the 21st century? Do you do a lot of education or uh, how do you help them to make that connection to see um, the, the impact that, that it's having on, on the current yeah. generation? I do it based on the client. If I think a client is reflective or cognitive or into that type of message, fine. If not, then I don't even bother. I'll just go straight to show them how to talk better to each other. <laughs> yeah, just keep it real, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why do you, you don't, not everybody needs to know why. As long, you know, I don't know how you fix my air conditioning. As long as you fix it, then I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to know why it broke. Just fix it, dude. Right, just, yeah. Yeah, I hear it. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your you, you work sounds fascinating. Um, you know, I have been recently, uh, well, not recently. I've been I've been a therapist for a long time. I've been a coach for for a while. Um, but I, I do I do uh, run up against sometimes, you know, men of color uh, mm -hmm. feeling really resistant and and lacking the the language skills and and just sort of the the experience that that women have. Um, and, and so I find myself having to really be open and compassionate and, and understanding uh, yeah. uh, from, yeah. from that place. And, and once that happens, then we're able to make a connection and, you know, and move forward with the work. So I, I just thank you for, for just sort of bringing that out front, because I think uh -huh. it's really important for, for our, our viewers to understand what's going on. Yes. Know? Yes. You know, men... We tend to like to do things uh, that we're good at, yeah. and um, our value in society tends to come from what we achieve, right. what we can do. Right. Early on, we're like, "See what I can do," right. you know, <laughs> right. as little boys. Right. Absolutely. And so our self-esteem tends to be tied up into that, where uh, you know people will theorize and say that a women's self-esteem, right or wrong, just tends to be uh, come from relationship one and also beauty and these types of things. With men, it tends to be more into achievement. Not to say that that should be, but just descriptively, I'm describing where people tend to get their work from in our society. Right. In the American culture, that tends to be measured by how much money you make. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but mm -hmm. even early on when we grow up uh, in, in, uh, in our schools, we find out the boys that are good in school, they do, they do school work. The boys who are good in sports, they do sports. The ones that are good in music, they do music. Mm -hmm. All that other stuff, the people who do the academics, nah, I don't need to do the <laughs> sports. Mm -hmm. People who do the sports, nah, I don't need to do the academics because it's this feeling of wanting to be respected. Okay. Wanting to, respect is very important. And if I can get respected in this area, then that's what I'm going to do. Gonna I'm, do. Not gonna, I'm not going to bother with this other stuff that I feel shame from because I'm not performing well because that doesn't make me feel good about myself. Yeah. So I say all that to say is the communication is something that men tend to not be uh, as adept in as females as far as relationships and communicating and so mm -hmm. coming to counseling is not a very attractive idea where men are going to be like, oh yeah you know let's, right. go, let's yeah, go to right. counseling come in and talk right yeah talk you know <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> so they come kicking and screaming you know because usually when they come it's, at a, it's in a pretty bad level because it's at a last resort it's a last resort right yeah and so where it could have been helpful if they had come earlier but you, you work with what you get exactly Dr. Turpo, um, any last thoughts? I mean, this has been really enlightening uh, our conversation. Any last thoughts, particularly for the for the black couple out there, or, or any couple? But I know your work is a lot with with, with black couples mm -hmm. um, struggling. What do you suggest? Any final thoughts? Okay, um, for individuals, I really want to say uh, really focus on compatibility. I've had people tell me when they come in, well, I know marriage is hard work and this and that type of thing. I say, oh, contraire. Marriage does not have to be hard work, you know, it does not have to be, if you make a good decision up front. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I had to learn that the hard way. I had to learn, uh, hard yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With my first marriage, and my first marriage that didn't work out, it was a whole lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. It was square peg, round hole. Mm -hmm. So it was like, Ugh. Yeah, but I bet, you some, I bet you learned some stuff from that, though. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hard work, and I learned from it, fortunately. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't learn. Right, right. <laughs> so, but this second time around, because I paid attention to compatibility, mm. I've been happily married since 1992. Mm, uh, I don't work hard on my marriage. Of course, there's maintenance, you know, as far as doing sure. things and loving on each other. Sure. Uh, but um, it's not a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an enjoyable experience. Okay, so so how can our viewers contact you uh, and follow your work? I, I know this has been really exciting and and thought provoking. How can we be in, get in touch with you? Sure, there's a couple of ways. Uh, okay. You can uh, go to my website, drturpo.com. Mm-hmm. Also, you can uh, reach me at blacklovedoctor.com as well. That uh, tends to be a little bit more memorable. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> My telephone number is 678-522-6548. Again, the website is blacklovedoctor.com. Yeah. And I know you're offering a free gift. Can you tell our viewers about that? Yes, yes. My free gift is the first consultation of relationship coaching is free. It can be you individually. It can be your, as a couple. The first consultation that I have with you will be about 45 minutes to an hour. Mm-hmm. And we can do that in person. We can do it Skype like we're doing, or we can do it over the telephone. Okay. And I'm willing to offer that free of charge. Okay. So I'll make sure that that is all um, accessible to our viewers. Um, very generous. Thank you so much. Sure. Dr. Aaron Turpo, thank you for loving out loud with us today. Sure thing. And uh, feel free to go to my website, check out my book, The Harmonious Way. Yeah. How to find love, love and marriage by playing your true note. Playing your true note. Thank you, Dr. Turbo. Thank you. Great work. <laughs>